Okay, so after using our torches, we were able to get the pulley off and uh, you guys can see just the extent of the damage. There's basically no bearing left. It's non-existent. So, you know, that got to the point where, you know, it got so loose that it just started wallering it out even more. And uh, basically, to get this off now, you got to remove uh, these three nuts. Then we'll be able to pull this uh, little cover off and then we'll be able to look at uh, getting a replacement bearing part. As for our pulley here, uh, I just took a flap disc, which is uh, one of these guys right here. So it's like sandpaper on top of a grinding wheel. And uh, I just cleaned out the outside of this because we were starting to gouge it with uh, you know, our tie rod removal tool that we were using to wedge in there. So I just cleaned this up a bit. And then that put a little bit of a edge on the inside. So I just took a little bit of sandpaper and uh, went along the inside to clean that up. And then I took a file and I cleaned up our keyway as best I could. So now uh, that's all good. Uh, it didn't get bent in the process of heating, which was nice uh, because uh, that might have been like a $30 part if we would have had to replace that. So the crankshaft is still in good condition. The pulley is still in good condition. Uh, so all we're really looking at is a bearing and a belt. Okay, now here's the, uh, well, could be the difficult part, could be the easy part. You might get lucky, which uh, as you can see, I just did. But uh, these bolts are supposed to be, as far as I know, welded onto the inside of this uh, auger housing. Uh, now sometimes those welds break and uh, when you go to back off one of your nuts, the bolt spins with it. Uh, and basically you have to get a super long extension because you have to put basically a ratchet from this end with an extension going all the way back inside of there to get at that bolt at the very back. And you guys can see that I've got all three nuts off of that. So now this uh, bracket here should pull right off. Okay, and once you get those nuts off, you should be able to go in there and uh, just pry this up on either side. And uh, this little uh, bearing hosing, that's what it's called, uh, should come right off. And uh, you guys can see the extent of the damage inside of here. The whole bearing and the housing, everything's just been completely wallered out. So this is our bearing, uh, or what's left of it, inside of this housing. So you guys can see the little lip here, that's the housing, and then this inside is uh, what's left of the bearing. So uh, this is uh, garbage. We're going to see if we can punch out uh, what's left of that bearing to save this uh, bearing housing. And uh, then we got to come in here and we have to remove this collar. So this right here is called a collar and there is a set screw in it. So you're going to have to get in there with a Allen wrench and uh, take that off to loosen that off. Uh, I'm going to hit it with a little bit more um, penetrating oil. And uh, if I can't slip that off, then uh, I'll have to put heat to that as well. Once we get our collar here off, then uh, what I'm going to do is take uh, some uh, emery paper, which is very, very fine sandpaper. We're going to clean up this shaft. Uh, we're going to take our keyway out so we don't lose that. And uh, we're going to clean that up, make sure there's no burrs on it. And then when we go to put everything back together, the, the bearing and, and you know um, all of the, the pulley on top, I'm going to be taking nickel anti-seize to all of these bolts and to the um, shaft itself so that, uh, you know, the next time somebody has to uh, take the pulley off to change one of these bearings, uh, it'll come off uh, without a problem. Now, a lot of people don't do stuff like that because, uh, well, simply put, uh, it's not going to be their problem, right? So they're changing a bearing and they probably won't have to change the bearing again in the lifetime that they're going to use the machine for. They'll probably end up selling it well before it needs another bearing replacement. But uh, here at Eliminated Performance, uh, I like to do stuff, you know, the way that I like to do stuff. So if I ever have to take the pulley off to replace a bearing or uh, the next guy that works on it does, uh, then he won't have to go through the... Uh, you know, the work that I'm doing right now. Okay, so that collar and the rest of the bearing uh, is not coming out with uh, just by using penetrating oil and a little bit of force, which means we got to result to using heat again. So I'm going to get the torch again and uh, heat up that collar and we should be able to pull that right off the shaft. Okay, so we're at the point now where we've heated up to the point where it was red hot and uh, it won't budge. So what we're going to do is remove the shaft and the auger from the auger housing. That's super simple on this, guys. Basically, you come over here and you're gonna have three bolts right there. Same thing on the other side, remove these three bolts, remove the three bolts on the other side, and then uh, you should be able to pull this little plate off there. And uh, 
theoretically, we should just be able to, as long as nothing's like seized in there, we should be able to pull the entire auger from this red auger housing. And once you get the three bolts out, just grab a hold of this, guys, and just pull it right off. Should look a little something like this. So you should just be able to pull it right out, pull the other side off, and then it'll be a lot easier working on just a shaft, right? Because then we can have the shaft, we can put something behind it and, uh, you know, hammer on it. And, uh, you know, it'll be a lot easier than uh, working the way we were. Okay, so looking at our auger, we can see that on either side, we are clear and free. The only thing we got to do now is uh, there's a bolt, single bolt, that we got to get off right there. And that just goes right there. So we'll get this undone. And with that hanger bolt on the top off, we should be able to pull our auger straight out. There you have it guys. So this is right here, the insides of a snowblower auger. Pretty simple stuff. So there's the inside of our housing now. We can go in there if we want and uh, you know hit that up with uh, some paint, but uh, right now we just got uh, undercoating in there so that it doesn't rust any further. But here's our uh, auger, the internals. So like I said, you know your pulley at the back rotates, that goes all the way down the shaft. So as you're uh, you know snow blowing, snow comes in at an angle here, gets forced back into from your first stage, gets forced back into the second stage, and then again the second stage flappers push the snow up your chute. Pretty simple design guys. There's really not much to a snowblower other than these two components here. Uh, you know your back half and your front half, and then uh, of your front half, that's basically it right here. This is your gearbox, and that transfers your power from a straight shaft into a 90 degree right there you guys can see and uh, yeah if you ever need to replace the bearings at the end they're pretty simple they just pop on like I said those three bolts they come right off and then uh, this pulls right out so it's a pretty simple design but uh, now we have access to the shaft and we can get up underneath it we can get all the way around it 360 degrees we don't have to worry about damaging the uh, the red uh, housing and uh, you know this is a lot easier to work on like this. I gotta say that uh, you know out of all of this the hardest part is uh, getting that pulley off because the manufacturers uh, they don't use uh, nickel anti-seize because they never think of doing maintenance on any of these snowblowers or uh, lawnmowers or anything like that. They just pump them out as quick as they can and uh, you know it's guys like us that uh, have to you know take the torch to them to heat them up and do all this extra work that uh, really wouldn't need to be done if they just used a little bit of nickel anti-seize on that shaft and uh, you know these issues uh, they wouldn't exist so I'm gonna have to get that collar off and once I get that off I'll be able to order my parts so uh, that's it for now um, I'll bring you back once I do have those parts and uh, again I'll put them up on screen for you so you guys can see all the part numbers and everything so I'll bring you back once that's done okay so we finally got our bearing in so let's have a look at our old bearing first before we uh, take a look at our new bearing so you guys can see that uh, here's that collar that I had to get off of the shaft so this piece here the bearing goes here and then this is your collar with your set screws and then you lock that onto the shaft using the set screws and uh, after putting a little bit of heat to it uh, we finally got that off but the way that this goes together is uh, basically you have these two pieces here and uh, your bearing now this is supposed to be one part guys so this is this is essentially your bearing uh, so this is basically spun the bearing to the point where it's just disintegrated everything you guys can see there's all kinds of pieces coming out but uh, this right here should look a little something like this so here's our bearing and I will put a part number down for you guys but you guys can see two set screws there's our bearing that's what it's supposed to look like so you guys can see the difference here there's absolutely nothing left of this old bearing here's our new bearing you guys can see spins nice and freely I'm gonna oil that up. Okay, so I'm just doing a little test fitting now. And at first I wasn't able to get this bearing onto the shaft. So what I ended up doing was taking a little bit of emery cloth there, which is really fine sandpaper. And I got a jug here of just some uh, 10W30 oil inside of a spray bottle. And I oiled down this shaft and uh, just sanded it down to uh, get all the rust off of it. But now you guys can see the bearing goes on and it slides freely up and down the whole shaft. But before I end up putting this on, we're gonna have to get this back inside of the blower housing, which is right over there. Okay, so I got my auger here set up and I just put my locators with the three bolts 
on either side. I guess you guys could call those like retainers or bearings. Now you guys have to remember that there's going to be two thrust washers. So these um, basically take up the slack of the end play. So the side to side motion once these two ends are installed. And these two thrust washers guys, they go on the inside, right? So we're gonna be putting them onto the ends of the auger assembly here first. Then we're going to slide it in and bolt on our end pieces and that'll keep everything secure at the front. So let me get this in here and then I'll bring you back. And when you're going to put this in here, make sure that your hanger assembly right there is obviously aiming towards the top because that goes through that hole there. And uh, that's basically just the bolt that goes in to, uh, you know, hang it and to keep it all centered up. So what I would recommend is get your bolt in there just to uh, line everything up and uh, tighten it up a bit, but don't tighten it up all the way. You guys can see that uh, I've left it uh, slightly loose so that uh, I can get my two ends on and then uh, that'll basically uh, give me my left and right and uh, center me up and then I'll go ahead and uh, tighten that up and then we could go ahead and move to the back. And for this part, again, make sure you have your uh, thrust washer on the inside and then we're gonna take this piece right here and we're just going to line it up until it fits in and then now we can go ahead and get our bolts in and then do the same thing on the other side don't tighten them up yet just get everything uh, snug I'd say and then we could go ahead you know do a once over make sure everything's lined up and we should be good to go to uh, tighten everything up and I would also highly recommend using a little bit of uh, nickel anti-seize on these bolts because you guys have to remember that these are uh, steel bolts going into uh, a steel housing and you guys can see that the holes for these bolts end up going through to the other side so these are going to be constantly subjected to snow and uh, again because they're steel bolts uh, going into a steel housing uh, that could cause rust so either run like a stainless steel bolt or if you're going to be reusing these old bolts uh, go ahead and put a little bit of uh, nickel anti-seize and that should prevent this stuff from rusting guys and now that both our left and uh, right side there are uh, tightened up we're going to go ahead and tighten up that middle bolt and then i'll flip this thing up and we'll move on to the back and be sure to use a little bit of nickel anti-seize on that top bolt as well now before we put our bearing on uh, as per usual here at eliminator performance you're going to want to apply a vigorous amount of nickel anti-seize so that the next person that works on this thing isn't going to have to take a torch to get this pulley off again we've already sanded it down taking all the rust off so a little bit of nickel anti-seize guys goes a long way we're gonna do the same with uh, these threaded bolts here and uh, you know the next person that has to work on this they ever have to take the pulley off and uh, do a bearing swap in another you know 10 15 20 years if this thing's still running then they'll be able to just slip it right off and they won't have any issues okay so now we're ready to put everything back together you guys can see again a little bit of anti-seize on both ends so this is how this goes together you're gonna take this piece here with the flange to the back and we're gonna drop this over top of our threads first, okay? That's gonna go on there first. That has the recess, remember, and the flange goes to the back. On this side, we have the recess here with the flange going that way. I've put a little bit of anti-seize on this side, not the other side, so that when these two pieces fit together over top of this bearing, they won't seize together. So now what you're gonna do is take your bearing, we're gonna slide that down, and we're gonna fit it just like that, guys. Now, it should self-level itself, but uh, you know what I would recommend is uh, just check it and uh, give it a couple little taps to make sure that it's seated in there properly. And then you're gonna go ahead and take this piece with the flange side out, and we're gonna fit that over top, and then we can go ahead and put our nuts onto the three threaded posts. Okay, so now we got our top piece in. Go ahead and put your lock washers on first, and then you can go ahead and take your nuts and uh, tighten them on. Again, using nickel anti-seize to prevent these steel nuts from rusting. And uh, this, guys, is uh, almost done. So once I get those tightened up, we'll go ahead and tighten up our set screws, and then we'll go ahead and get our pulley on with our keyway, and this thing is done. Okay, so I don't wanna get ahead of myself here because we still have to tighten up those set screws, but I gotta say I love it when a plan comes together. Um, there's a little issue with this uh, pulley and that is when you put this pulley on there's not enough room to get a belt around it and that's why they have these five belt keepers so those posts coming up and uh, basically they fit so tight to the uh, pulley that you, there's no room to fit a belt in so my plan was to put the belt 
into this pulley so that it seats into the groove there and then drop it in and uh, that would give me obviously enough room so that uh, I wouldn't have to remove these five posts. And lo and behold, the parts guy just showed up at my door and uh, he basically rang the doorbell and ran back to his truck because it's like a monsoon here. We're getting rained out. It's uh, crazy amounts of rain we got today. The wind's blowing and uh, you guys probably heard it on the, the door pushing back and forth. But uh, I just got my belt in, so I'll go and get that from the front, and then we'll get this thing finished up. And using an eighth inch Allen key, I've tightened up both of our set screws. So now when we go to spin this, look at that, guys. Spins nice and easy. No binding, no grinding. That's what we like. And we got a, a new True Blue Kevlar belt here, courtesy of Stens. So thanks to them for sending this out. It's a half inch by 45 inch. And this is basically what I was referring to before, getting your belt inside of the pulley so you guys can see now lots of room so again we can just drop that on versus putting the pulley on first and then having to remove all of those studs the five of them there those are called belt keepers and basically uh, the job of these things is just to keep your belt uh, onto the pulley that's why they're called belt keepers but uh, yeah this will make it a lot easier okay so the issue that I'm having is that uh, the key gets about that far down and uh, then it basically jams itself in there it's pretty tight. So uh, what I'm going to do is take a file and uh, clean that up just a little bit more. I did it before, but uh, obviously I didn't do it enough. And then I'll also take a file uh, just to the edges of this thing just to make sure that there's no burrs on it because right on this edge I can feel a slight little burr and uh, that'll catch on this pulley. I'm also going to do a technique known as flat planing. So I'm going to take this, lay my file flat, and then basically I'm just going to go and file it nice and flat just until I get the burrs off of this and uh, both sides feel flat and then I'll go ahead and file down the front face. Now you guys don't want to take too much material off here. The only thing we're trying to do is uh, get rid of the burrs on the ends because you guys have to remember that this is a key. It goes into the keyway and uh, if we make this any smaller there's going to be play in that shaft and uh, you'll have a higher chance of shearing this key. So you guys can see that the flat planing technique is working. We're farther down but we're still not all the way as it's still catching. So I'm going to take a little bit more off and then we'll be good to go. So a little pro tip whenever filing or grinding something or sanding you always want to go little by little. So we finally got it to the point where it'll slide all the way down nice and smooth with uh, no binding, which is always good. So now we should be ready to put this back onto the machine. And a little uh, pro tip for uh, lining up a keyway that uh, you can't see from the top. Uh, go ahead and get yourself a permanent marker and just mark the side of your pulley and that'll mark the position of your keyway so that when you drop this onto the shaft, you'll know exactly where your keyway is. So that's what I'm talking about there. I just got something under the pulley to hold it up. But we can see that my permanent marker line lines up perfectly with the keyway. So now it should drop right in. Just like that. And you want to make sure that your pulley here is uh, bottomed out as far as can be. And you guys can see the crankshaft right underneath that welded washer there. So it is bottomed out. So uh, now we're going to go ahead and take our bolt with a washer here. We don't have to worry about putting anti-seize onto this bolt uh, because we do have anti-seize inside of the thread uh, of the crankshaft itself. Um, so we're going to put this in, tighten that up, and uh, this thing's ready to uh, bolt back onto the rear housing. So just quickly before I put everything back together, let's get a quick before. You guys can see just how bad it is. So it can go forward and back. So this bearing's been gone for quite a while. And now an after, I'm pulling up on it. There's no end play, which is the up and down. There's no side to side. And when we go to spin this thing, just using a ratchet, spins nice and freely. That's perfect, guys. So because we used a Kevlar belt, uh, the cost was a little bit more expensive. Not that much, though. Uh, that ended up coming in at uh, $12.56. And uh, the bearing was uh, $21, bringing our total repair cost to $33.56. We also got two tubes because both of these tires are flat, so we'll end up... Uh, replacing those tubes. And the uh, tubes, they were uh, $8 a piece uh, times two, that's $16. Uh, so that brings our total repair cost for this entire snowblower to $49.56. So under 50 bucks, we were able to fix this thing up, uh, minus the labor, obviously. And uh, yeah, I mean, uh, good deal all around. We'll be able to sell this thing, uh, no problem, once we get it all tuned up. 
uh, but for this video I just wanted to focus on uh, the bearing replacement. So we paid uh, $175 for this snowblower. Um, probably would have liked to get it for 150 but the guy was firm uh, and it fired up so at least I knew that it ran and uh, basically after the $175 plus the $49.56 let's call it 50 bucks uh, we're into this for uh, $225 total uh, once this thing's all done and uh, put back together uh, and fully serviced as we always fully service our machines before sale we'll probably end up putting this on for about $500 uh, which will give us a total profit of about $275. So for a couple hours of labor, that's not that bad. So here's a shot of uh, what the snowblower looked like before we put it back together. You guys can see the new bearing installed and uh, we ended up hitting it with a coat of red paint just to freshen it up a bit. But you guys can see the difference a little bit of paint does uh, just from these pictures here. We even taped off some stickers and the light on the back and painted the piece of plastic uh, between the handles there. And these pictures really speak for themselves. I mean, if we look at uh, this picture here, uh, when you're looking at this snowblower and you know, you're seeing the red paint faded like it is compared to the red paint that we use here, uh, which is you know, a bright red, it's real vibrant. I think it just makes this snowblower stand out a lot more. And uh, I think that this thing turned out awesome and we should be able to make a nice profit off of it. Well, that's it for part two, guys. If you enjoyed the video, think about leaving me a thumbs up. You can click over here to subscribe and you can click over here to watch one of my previous videos. I upload new videos every week, so be sure to come on back and check out the channel next week and see what we got new. And as always, guys, thanks for watching.